Let's look at the various forms of pulse modulation uh, that are commonly used in radio communications. This uh, material can be found in my book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. I have the fifth edition before me. It's in chapter 25, figure 25-8, page 439. I just noticed a little glitch in that caption. Can you tell me if you see that figure what that little glitch is? Okay, I'll tell you. It says figure 25-8C. It names the entire figure C. Well, actually, the figure contains four illustrations showing different types of pulse modulation, and one of them is C. Pulse modulation. Well, as the term implies, pulse modulation occurs as a series of pulses, and what you're looking at here are oscilloscope-type displays, time on the horizontal axis, amplitude on the vertical axis, of what a pulse modulation signal might look like in four different flavors. This particular type right here is pulse amplitude modulation. The pulses, these gray lines, are all the same width, but their amplitude varies according to the instantaneous amplitude of the signal modulating uh, waveform, for example, a voice or a video uh, image in analog form. That is the way that it works. It, this is called positive pulse amplitude modulation, or PAM. Positive modulation, meaning that the amplitude increases as uh, of the pulses increase as the amplitude of the modulating signal increases. Now you can also reverse that and make the pulses weaker and weaker. In, uh, when you do that, weaker and weaker as the analog signal gets stronger, that would be negative pulse amplitude modulation. But positive I think is more common because it's easier on the circuitry. You don't, when there's no modulation at all with negative modulation, you get full strength. So it's sitting there idling at full speed. That's not such an economical way to go. So positive pulse amplitude modulation. This, on the other hand, is pulse width modulation. Width, meaning how wide they are, PWM. Also known in some circles as pulse duration modulation because the width of the pulses is correspondent to the length of time that they're actually activated. So the wider the band here, the wider the stripe, the longer the pulse lasts, the wider it is. And again, in positive pulse width or pulse duration modulation, as the analog waveform increases in instantaneous amplitude, the width or duration of the pulses increases, but their amplitude always remains the same, so that this is a considerably different way of modulating a signal than this. Whereas this actually ch requires that the pulses be different uh, amplitudes, all the pulses here are the same amplitude. They are simply wider when the input waveform is stronger. That is pulse width or pulse duration modulation. Now let's look at the next scenario. Look, notice that all of the pulses here are equally wide and equally strong, but the difference is in the time interval between them. They occur more frequently, more often, more per second, more pulses per second as the analog signal increases in strength. So when the analog input amplitude is at its maximum, the pulses are the most closely spaced. So you get the most uh, energy relatively out of the transmitter even though they're all equally wide and all equally strong. Contrary-wise, uh, when there's no signal at all, you will get uh, either no pulses or very infrequent 
pulses. Pulse interval modulation. That is what uh, this is generally called. PIM. Pulse interval modulation. And the final method I would like to show you is an, one of various different uh, methods of obtaining what they call pulse code modulation or PCM. In this case it's amplitude based pulse code modulation very similar to the analog pulse amplitude modulation but the pulses can only uh, attain specific digital levels in this case there are eight of them with binary digits ranging from 000 or binary numerals ranging from 000 that's the binary zero to 111 that's the binary seven so it's zero one two three four five six seven eight levels you can have any generally any power of two you might have 16 you might have 32 you might have 64 the analog amplitude is shown over here uh, and uh, this little line on the right you can disregard that that's the right hand extreme of the graph but it doesn't mean anything maybe I can well no never mind just ignore that black line I don't know how that got there I guess that was uh, because of resizing the art and everything for this video just you know little things happen stuff happens when you're making videos hopefully it's all technically accurate stuff but that is the situation with pulse modulation those are four different types of pulse modulation now we might also have digital codes say 0 through 7 which can work in either of these other two modes either how often they happen or how wide they are more likely how wide they are the 0 would be the thinnest or tiniest slimmest pulse and eight would be the widest pulse so that uh, here you can have continuously variable pulse width here it would be variable only in digital increments pulse code modulation PCM so with that I will conclude this little presentation here is the information that you might like to to use to obtain this book if you're interested in this course it's a it's done fairly well for me um, people seem to like the presentation by and large there are a few who don't uh, it has multiple choice uh, quizzes at the ends of the chapters and the fifth edition edition number five uh, has uh, online explanations for all the answers to the quiz questions at the end of the chapters and also videos on YouTube that explain the answers to all of the final exam questions that is the fifth edition so if you want to get the fifth edition and uh, future editions as they come out will also have online supplemental content go to my website sciencewriter.net you can find all my books there uh, links to all of them on Amazon.com and you can also find some other information about me in particular and about where I live for example go to the neutrino lab link neutrino lab link it's uh, the one two three four fifth link down as of this video uh, the Sanford underground laboratory here in my hometown of Leed South Dakota in the middle of the continent and Dakota Territory United States of America so and I also by the way have published errata sheets online mistakes you'll find links to those on my website too there are a lot of them I guess if you publish enough stuff you'll make a lot of mistakes may as well call attention to them and let you know about them instead of leaving you in the dark that's my philosophy and I'll always try to become perfect I know I know and you can find a link to my YouTube video site at the bottom of this here. You can watch some other stuff that I've done. Nonsense. Stan Gibalisco signing off. Until next time, so long.